Hi, Dr. Tara. Amit. It's so nice to meet you. Oh, it's so great to see you. I've been looking you. forward to this for quite a long time. I've seen your brain, but now I get to see the new brain. Yes, yeah, so How I'm exciting excited. is that? Very excited. So I hope right. I hope the work pays off. <laughs> so Tara, thank you so much for doing this. I've been looking forward. <laughs> I have too. So tell me your story. I fell in love with tennis more at, at around 12, 13. And then at 17, I turned professional. I won the junior US Open and had the opportunity to sign with an agency and kind of hit the tour running. And then that's when I moved to Texas, which is how I, you know, had met Dr. Phil and kind of had the Dallas connection. Um, but yeah, I, I turned pro like most players at a fairly young age and was traveling the world by 17, 18 years old. Well, it's such a mental game. It is. And so many of my athletes, when they make a mistake, they abuse themselves <laughs> rather than encourage themselves. I was one. I was very, I will admit, I was very hard on myself on the court. And did you take that on after tennis or were you able to give it up at some point? I was able to give it up. So sort of being that hard on myself. And I think that's, it makes you in one area you excel because you always raise the bar. So I think part of that made me, you know, helped me get to 33 in the world, which was my highest ranking. Um, because I was never satisfied. I was always pushing myself. But I think after, when you get into the real world, you can't, you know, beat yourself up. We met because Dr. Phil texted me and said, I have a dear friend who's not doing well. You need to see her. Correct. <laughs> I contracted COVID in early August and I had a lot of just routine symptoms. It was a fairly mild case. But what happened is about eight to 10 days into COVID, I started having insomnia and having psychological difficulties. And, you know, I have a degree in psychology. So that was my background. And I had studied a ton of sports psychology and always thought that was kind of a strength. Of course, being a professional athlete was the mental part of, um, part of it. So to go into the mental kind of brain fog and have the psychological issues that I ended up having about two to three weeks into COVID. I think that's what was so shocking um, and feeling so healthy and then kind of having the carpet pulled from under me, underneath me was so difficult. Um, but I luckily, Dr. Phil, I went to Dallas and my husband was a tennis player as well, professional tennis player. And he played tennis with Dr. Phil. And afterwards he was so kind and just said, you know, I know you, this is not who you are. You know, I was, severely depressed at that point and brain fog and just struggling, struggling with getting by day to day. So he made the call to you and it changed my life. I mean, that was the beginning for me of, of getting healthy. Tell me more about the psychological pain. Um, it was different because it was mental, but it also felt physical in a strange way. I mean, I, I really felt um, after having COVID, I had the typical brain fog symptoms. So, you know, memory, I lost. If I was watching TV or something, I really couldn't even decipher of like, oh, that's Jennifer Aniston or that's George Clooney or someone. I just, I couldn't pull up, couldn't recall names. Um, I wasn't able to focus, uh, to watch TV, to read a book, um, even checking my phone, Facebook, texting, you know, communicating, it would just all shut down. So I had, I think when we spoke, I had kind of lost pleasure in everything. So it was almost like the anhedonia. Is that how you, yeah. So I just felt emotionally completely blocked and I never had that. I think that's what was hard because in tennis in the past, you'd have up, ups and downs. You'd have a bad match and feel down, you know, for a night about it or something, but I had never had sustained kind of loss of pleasure. And I really just felt like I, I couldn't um, feel. I, I had lost the emotional feeling. And then I had some neurological symptoms as well, like the coordination, my balance, um, I struggled even just walking. I mean, I just had just, it was like a snowball effect. And I, I had a lot of symptoms that I never had realized came with long COVID because the doctors, what you said, they really didn't know a lot about it. 
And so they were just, I went to a psychologist and they were just kind of throwing medicine at me. And at one point I was on five or six heavy meds. Wow. And so until I, you know, got with you and we connected and you simplified everything and said, hey, let's start with a new baseline. Um, let's start over and let's get this thing under control. It, it was a scary place to be in. And, and again, I had had some serious depression and some suicidal thoughts and it was just a very definitely a dark place and was that the first time you had suicidal thoughts yes no. i have your cognitive testing before oh. and after yeah and it was a mess <laughs> the before was a mess um, it was a mess yes um i mean you just see how your brain had been assaulted if you will You want to see your skin? I would love to see it. So, your first skin is the one on the left, and you see your emotional brain is really lit up. Yeah. And that's very intense. It's calm. I like that. Your cerebellum, which is actually not as healthy as it could be, do you see how much whiter it is here? That's coordination but it's also thought coordination, how quickly you can integrate new information. And professional athletes often have really good activity there, but yours got hurt. And after doing what you did, it got better. Um, the outside surface, your temporal lobes here, you have a group. Oh. You have a group. Thank you. But it's prettier now. <laughs> <laughs> because your temporal lobes are fuller and fatter. So clearly going in the right direction. Um, but the thing that's most like, oh my goodness, whoa, is the cognitive testing we did on you. So the one on the left is the first one and you're just a mess. <laughs> You know, red up here means you're depressed and you're anxious and you have emotional trauma and social anxiety and you're a mess. Flexibility wasn't great. And now if we go to today, <laughs> there's no red up here. You are not a mental health case. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're still good at recognizing faces, but now you recognize positive faces, um, less stress, not depressed, memories even better than before, focus is amazing, planning is better, it's normal, processing speed is where we would expect for a professional athlete. Okay. Brian, um, I guess you could still be a little bit more flexible. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? <laughs> 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 but I'm a, I look at this and I'm so happy oh, for you. Yes. And I am. I've said it, you know, I said this before, but you have been honestly my brain angel. I'm just so grateful. I feel like, again, it was everything happens for a reason. And, and I don't know where I would be. I really don't if, if you and I hadn't connected. And I'm the rabbit hole of hell. Of <laughs> We're in this toxic downward spiral where you have these symptoms, take these drugs, they have you on clonazepam. It's like, once you start that stuff, it's really hard to stop. It is. And it's scary. It's, um, we can do better. Yeah. We, we just believe we have to change how psychiatry is practiced. It's, it's the dark ages. The outcomes in so many areas of medicine are like, light years ahead of where they were in the 1950s. Psychiatry is the same. The outcomes are the same. In fact, there's more people in society sick now, way more than then. I was shocked too with the lack of answers, you know, and I know everyone's at hospitals and doctors seem to know how to fight COVID, you know, more of the mainstream symptoms, but going to the psychologist and I felt like an experiment. I mean, with long COVID, they, they see you on the outside and you look healthy enough. And then they 
were treating me when I first went to the hospital down in Reno. We drove from Truckee down to Reno and they were treating it like delirium. So I was on Hadderall, um, Ativan, Trazodone, uh, Klonopin. There's probably two or three other ones that I can't even remember that they, you know, they just throw the medication. Did they give you an SSRI? Like they, Lexapro or Luvox or um, Prozac? Yeah, Fluvox, Fluvoxamine in a small dose. So Cause that actually showed some benefit yes. on, on COVID. But I would argue that hospitals did a really awful job. You know, the United States has 4% of the world's population but 16% of the world's COVID deaths. The USA gets an F for how we responded. And often it was go home. And when you're sick enough to be on a ventilator, then come back, it's sort of insane. You know, you go to the hospital and you were afraid that you would end up, they would check you in and then your family couldn't see you when you first had COVID and you might end up on a ventilator. So a lot of us that had mild cases, we didn't go to the hospital, right? We just self-treated at home. Right. And that's where it evolved into this huge psychological few weeks later of this mental, if you want to call it illness or mental disorders. And my husband being from South Africa, in South Africa, they knew about all this mental. When we call his family, they're like, we know the hospitals are flooded with people that are having mild COVID symptoms, but major psychological symptoms. And so why, you know, for lack of a better word, are they not treating that? until when you, it gave me so much hope to see my brain scan and to see that and go, okay, that's what we're dealing with. And it was scary, you know, when there were some oxygen or some little bit of- Areas um, of decreased activity. Yes. But at least it was like, okay, here's an area that I can improve that's gonna make me better. We saw you as a highly successful, competent person whose brain got assaulted. We didn't see you as a mentally ill person, right? And family and you know friends more so said, we would have thought you would have been the last person to have these kind of issues. Because yeah. it wasn't you. But most people who have, quote, mental illnesses, something else is going on. And if everybody works to get their brain healthy, mental illness just starts to go away. And people go, why? Rather than go, oh, she's depressed. Because otherwise those things would have worked. Yeah, and it was, again, eye-opening and saddening having a psychology degree and going to psychologists and not being able to get the treatment that was needed at the time. And I said that to my husband. I said, I'm gonna do everything I can that Dr. Amon said to get our life back because we had, and we do have, we had a great life. And so when that's pulled from you. And is he doing some of the things you're doing? I'm trying to get he him to do, do the supplements. He could do better. He could do better. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, what a joy. Yeah. This has just been amazing. <laughs>